Welcome to another edition of Force Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiff. And Matt, I noticed you're not at Saratoga right now. No, I am not. I'm, I'm here in New Jersey. Uh, haven't been able to make it make it up there. I don't know. Uh, uh, we'll see what happens as the summer goes on. But we got grade one sprinters, Brian, on both coasts. Yeah, we with the, the first should fly, Matt, as they say, the first should fly. We're going to find out a whole lot more about the road to the Breeders' Cup sprint with those grade one uh, sprints, as you said, both Saratoga and Del Mar. But before we do that, Matt, I'd like to talk about, I think, I think most people have their eye on the Jim Dandy at Saratoga, which is, of course, the big Travers prep. But it's become, especially more, I think, in recent years, Matt, a big race in its own right. Grade two, $600,000. Yeah, Brian, again, uh, I mean, we've said it before, it's a small field, but, uh, you know, it's a pretty good field. Uh, 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 graded stakes winners uh, for, for most of them in the field. So uh, interesting bunch, and it sure was spiced up when Brad Cox decided that essential quality was ready to roll. Yeah, that, that is good news. That made the Jim Dandy, of course, a more marquee race, Matt. And you're the one that always says, it doesn't have to be a big field to be a good field. So I think the Jim Dandy is an example of that. Folks, I want to remind you, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, please do so now. That really helps us out. Turn on those notifications. Matt, let's jump into the Jim Dandy. And of course, as you mentioned, we got to start with essential quality. I mean, he's the two-year-old champion. He hasn't missed a beat here in 2021. Six or seven lifetime. His only loss was a pretty close fourth. Disappointing as it was, a pretty close fourth, a pretty good performance in the Kentucky Derby. He bounced back in a big way with a big win in the Belmont Stakes. I guess what I'm saying, Matt, it, it was big. It was. And, you know, Brian, as, as a handicapper who had his doubts about uh, essential quality uh, throughout 2021, uh, his performance in the Belmont Stakes uh, has uh, taken those doubts away from me. Uh, you know, in that race, uh, he, he proved to me his quality, uh, his stamina, his determination down the stretch, his turn of foot in a race where he uh, defeated Hot Rod Charlie and, and obviously was even further flattered with uh, Hot Rod Charlie's performance uh, uh, in the Haskell, uh, you know, essential quality to me has an enormous class advantage over this field with three grade one wins in his uh, in his six career victories. Yeah, there, there's absolutely no fault in his record. That's for sure, Matt. And, and you're right. He does have a huge class advantage in here. But we are going to talk about some pretty good horses underneath. And Matt, I'm, I'm going to rib you just a little bit because I've been more a believer in essential quality than you have throughout. But this time, I think you might be more of a believer in this particular race in essential quality than me. I just think it's a tricky transition from the 12 furlong Belmont to the 10 furlong Travers. That's the goal. The 10 furlong Travers is the goal. They want to keep winning, obviously. Yes, I know. And he's the class of the race. But on the other hand, this race in the middle can be tricky. You know, I, I, I always do this, and it's a big fault of mine on the show, Matt. I go back way, way too far. I'm going to go back to 1978 when Affirmed came out of that grueling Triple Crown series with, uh, with Ali Dar. And I remember Speed Horse named Sensitive Prince uh, led every step of the way, Matt, until the very final two jumps maybe when Affirmed blew past him at the end. I just think this could be a race where it's uh, it, 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 my warning signs are up for essential quality. I think this is a race where he doesn't need to win. They want to win the Travers. They want to win the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, if there was a bunch of speed in here, I think it might help him, but there's not. I think there's the possibility that the champion, and I like him as much as anybody, the champion, the Belmont Stakes winner, could be vulnerable, probably at odds. We have him listed at three to five, Matt, but I think he'll be lower than that when the gates spring open. Well, Brian, historically, uh, whether, you know, whether you're talking about essential quality or Malafat or a list of a long list of horses that have gone down to defeat in uh, uh, at Saratoga at very short odds. I mean, that that the specter of the upset 
at Saratoga always looms, particularly in your, you know, in your first start uh, at Saratoga of the, of the summer. But uh, as I said, um, I think I take it as a really strong endorsement that uh, Brad Cox has brought uh, essential quality back here. I, I think he's in fine fettle in the morning, et cetera, et cetera. And, and some horse is going to have to run a really big one to beat essential quality in here. It, it, this is not a similar case to, to just being able to say, oh, well, what Malathot lost in the coaching club. Well, you know, Malathot was coming off of a, a little bit of a minor setback and, and a, number of, a number of other things. I can't find a way to knock essential quality. Yeah, yeah, and, and I agree with a lot of what you said. I also agree, I mean, it's a fact that he's never run at Saratoga before. And, and I also think that the, the, the fact that this is not the race that he needs to win, and this is not, this, this is a prep for the Travers. This is a prep for the Travers. And that always makes me wonder, especially at odds of three to 10 or two to five. Matt, let's talk about some of the other horses in the race. And they're good horses, as I said. Mask Parade uh, is, uh, it took him a little while to get going for uh, trainer Al Stahl Jr., Matt, but Mask Parade has really been terrific. I mean, he got rave reviews when he won that first level allowance at Churchill Downs on Kentucky Derby Day. He had never finished first in a race. He got put up in the race before. So that allowance win was actually the first time he ever finished first across the wire, but he did it by almost a dozen lengths in fast time. And then I think he proved it. He validated it with a nice win out in Ohio. He sure did. And, and uh, apparently uh, all the betters uh, of the Ohio Derby got the memo that uh, Mass Parade was for, for real because I was surprised uh, to see him as the favorite in there. And, and he came up with a really determined stretch run to get up and win that race by... Uh, by less than a length. So uh, I, I kind of feel like he's one of those horses uh, that last time was the time to have him, uh, even though he ended up as the favorite. Uh, and again, is he gonna be second choice in this race? Uh, maybe he is. Tons of respect for Al Stoll, for sure. Uh, he's got a, a three-year-old three -year here that seems to be moving upward. Yeah, and Al Stahl's a trainer, Matt, that I kind of like with uh, developing horses, not necessarily horses that uh, come out running right away. Of course, Blame is the obvious example where he just got better and better late in his three-year-old year and then became a champion at four. I'm not saying Masquerade is, is near there, but the last two races, I think, are, are for real, at least. Are they essential quality for real? Uh, no, not yet, not, 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 not ballpark yet, but I'm of the belief, as I said, that essential quality probably won't have his A plus game. He doesn't need his A plus game. And I, I think there's reason to believe he won't have his A plus game. If masquerade mask parade can move up just a little bit off his last two good performances, he is a threat. I also think Weyburn not is a threat. I don't think Weyburn gets credit. Certainly he didn't get credit when he won the Gotham back three starts ago at 46 to one. And I think his Wood Memorial probably doesn't look good on paper. And even the Pegasus, Matt, I think people are underestimating how good this horse, this Canadian bred son of Pioneer of the Nile has run. I also think he is the one horse who wants to be on the lead in this race. I agree with that part of it, Brian, that, that this is a, raid without, a race without speed. And, and uh, Weyburn is the only horse in the field that has shown that he does his best running, uh, usually pressing the pace. But in this case, uh, um, he'll probably uh, be on the lead. Um, and, and, and that will be helpful. Um, I, I certainly don't love him as much as you do. And I know you're big on him. There's just stuff, of, you know, in his past performances that make me feel and be concerned about inconsistency with this one. And, and he hasn't run since that Pegasus and, and this is no easy spot. No, no easy spot. And that's where we're going to get some odds. I do believe Mask Parade yeah. will be the second choice in here off those two big wins. So I think Weyburn or Keep Me In Mind are the horses probably pressing for third choice. Probably Weyburn will be bet below Keep Me In Mind as the third choice here on Saturday in the Jim Dandy. Uh, I, I don't have his problems with his consistency. I see the deep track 
and, and the Wood Memorial as a race that really favored closers that day. So I think Weybrin has been consistent. Uh, and, and the fact that he ran, what was it now, seven weeks ago or so, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. That's pretty normal for these horses uh, nowadays. I think this is his spot. I think he's more likely to do well in the year than the Travers, and that's probably not saying a whole lot. Also, we look at the last name of the trainer, Matt, and I think that's something to keep an eye on just a little bit because Jimmy Jerkins has, has had some success in this gym, Dandy, but uh, we've, we've been seeing Jerkins, the name Jerkins, pull up upsets at Saratoga for just about as long as we've been watching racing, Matt. And uh, I, I see the, uh, of course, his father is the giant killer, Alan Jerkins. I, I see the potential for another one here. Keep me in mind that uh, we've kind of been a little down on him throughout the year, and uh, he hasn't finished first or second in any start. But on the other hand, he'll be making his ninth consecutive graded stake start in the Jim Dandy. And if you look at maybe the fourth in the Preakness, two starts back, and then the third, a very good fast closing third in the Ohio Derby last time, it looks like at least he's in the good part of his form cycle Maybe if they push Weyburn early, keep me in mind is a threat to at least get up into second and third. Yeah, and and I, hey, Brian, I've been at the head of the list of, of people who have been down on this horse, but I did like his, his performance in the Ohio Derby. He was less than a length behind Mass Parade in there. And I tell you what, I think trainer uh, Robertino Diodoro is making a wise move with this deep closer with the jockey chain to Joel Rosario. Um, nobody is better uh, coming from behind than Rosario. I, I see that as maybe a move that can help keep me in mind, come up with one of his best performances in Jim Dandy. Yeah, and he's the fourth choice on our morning line, Matt, and I, I think he's a good bet to finish fourth or better in here. It seems like he will pass one of those three favorites at the very least. We didn't really talk about it yet, but it seems like essential quality mask parade. And the other horse we're about to mention, Dr. Jack, are three horses who all want to be at least keeping Weyburn in touch. I kind of mentioned, I don't know if essential quality, especially coming out of the 12 furlong Belmont will be as sharp as a tack for this race. So It'll be interesting to see how easy they let Weyburn get away or how much pressure those three stalkers, Essential Quality, Mask Parade, and Dr. Jack, I think they all have the same game plan here, uh, want to keep in touch. Dr. Jack, Todd Pletcher, Matt, you always like the Todd Pletcher trainees. This one, uh, three lifetime races. The Pegasus was a tough spot for his third lifetime race. He was right there at the eighth pole. Yeah. Uh, like you said, lightly raced uh, third in that Pegasus behind uh, Weyburn and Mandaloon. Um, and of course, uh, uh, Dr. Jack and Weyburn were both flattered by Mandaloon's performance uh, in the Haskell. Uh, maybe this is one of these Pletcher late developing three-year-olds. Maybe, maybe. Uh, his first three races are pretty good and the third race is not bad in his stakes debut. He'll have to improve. Maybe one of the reasons I don't like him in here is because I think he has the same running style for this particular race as essential quality, as mass parade. And I think that might make it a tough spot. So I, I like keep me in mind, set up at least a little bit more in here. The other horse in the race, Matt, is risk taking, who won the Withers rather nicely early in the year. Uh, that Withers looks like a, a more of an allowance level field now and his two races since the withers just have not been good i've heard of a few good things from chad brown that he's been working well but it's hard to recommend this horse off his recent form yeah last two races the finishes have been bad uh, both of those starts he, he didn't get off to a good start and and didn't do much after that i don't know if we can blame it on the start but he's going to have to make a very significant form re reversal to even be a contender yeah, Matt, that's not a good recipe to win a race if you don't get off to a good start and then you don't do much after that. So yeah. that's risk taking the, it looks like the longest shot on the board in the Jim Dandy. Let's stick with Saratoga, Matt. Uh, just a little bit earlier in the card, we have the grade one Alfred G. Vanderbilt, six furlongs, Matt, $350,000. And I think this attracted an excellent field. We got to start with the likely favorite, mischievous Alex, who was a big winner of the Carter, two starts back. Yeah, ex excellent field, Brian. Come on, you're, you're, you're understating it. This is a heck of a field. 
in this race. Uh, nine horses in there. And, and we've got, you know, we've got some warriors uh, in this field with uh, uh, Forenzi Fire and his 14 wins and Whitmore with his 15 wins. We've got some veteran, classy, graded stakes uh, sprinters uh, in the in this field so it's going to be a heck of a race but uh, uh yeah mischievous alex uh getting back to him um we have listed as the favorite you know uh, uh, he's not going to be a short favorite by any means not with uh not with the quality field in here but uh i i he went into the met mile with a couple of really nice wins a win in the carter a win in the gulfstream park sprint uh, and he finished third of the Met Mile in a race that really uh, did not set up well for him, really didn't go with his uh, race flow very well. The, to me, the, the one turn mile is pushing the edge of the distance that he wants to go. And, and there were horses in there that were much better suited to getting that mile. So the third in there uh, uh, was not bad. The cutback now to six furlongs should be a real positive move. Yeah, and, and I'll just I'll just go a step farther, Matt. I, I think the Met Mile was a really good performance for Mischievous Alex. If you're looking at this six furlong sprint here, he's obviously a sprinter. He likes one turn. He prefers six or seven furlongs more than a mile. I, I, I think we I think we know that. But his performance in the Met Mile was excellent. He was right there and he stuck around for a long time, finished a good third in the Met Mile. I think he will be a relatively clear favorite because the other horses are all kind of coming off losses, or at least the second and third choice in here. So I think Mischievous Alex is the horse to beat. He likes to be on or near the lead. Uh, it'll be a question uh, of how close he is early because I think this pace is going to be hot with a horse like Strike Power and a few others in here, Matt. So uh, Mischievous Alex is the horse to beat. I think if he gets caught up, though, in that uh, fast pace, that could hurt his chances just a little bit. He's the favorite. He's the horse to beat. I think Whitmore uh, is very interesting in here, Matt, because he has a very good record at Saratoga. I know his last race was bad at Saratoga, but that was a very, very sloppy track last year in the Forgo. You look at his other two races at Saratoga, uh, was a was a good second behind Matoli in this race uh, last year. So uh, I don't think there's any Matoli in this field. Uh, and he won the Forgo impressively a few years ago. So I think Whitmore makes a lot of sense in here because I already talked about a fast pace. Yeah, and hey, it's hard to knock Whitmore uh, very much, but Brian, he's eight years old now. And, and, and uh, you know, uh, time catches up with these guys uh, as they race uh, uh, Whitmore 41 starts. He doesn't have a win this year. He, he, uh, uh, and that includes two starts at his favorite track, his home base of Oaklawn, of Oaklawn Park. But you are right, Brian. Anytime there's a hot setup, you got to be keeping your eye on Whitmore. Yeah, and we have zero, we have zero ageism on this show, Matt. You and I are two guys that don't want to hear anything about being over the hill. So Whitmore, you know, he has, you're right, he hasn't won in three starts this year since winning the Breeders' Cup Sprint last year. But I think his races are just fine, and I think he might get a setup that's better this time. I also think that uh, uh, Saratoga is, a, is another one of those tracks where he really likes so. Watch out for the old veteran Whitmore. Forenzi Fire Matt was uh, going really good there, third in the Breeders' Cup, a couple wins to start the year. He was upset last time in the in, in the May route at Belmont Park. Yeah, and and you, again, like we said about Whitmore, uh, it, it it's hard not to say good things about Forenzi Fire, who is six years old now and has thirty four starts and fourteen wins. Um, and like you said, he headed into that Nayrud off of two nice wins in the True North and the Run Happy at Belmont Park. Certainly a horse that loves Belmont Park. But Forenzi Fire has won at Saratoga. Also, uh, um, credit to him coming back to and running so well for new trainer Kelly Breen after uh, racing for uh, Jason Service. Um, he's always right there and, and, and gutsy um, and, and certainly will take his share of the action. Yeah, I agree with everything you said, Matt. Uh, always like this horse, but I think there are a couple negatives from a handicapping standpoint if he is the third choice in here. 
Uh, number one, I think he's going from a track he likes better to a track he likes less. Uh, he, you know, not not saying he hates Saratoga, but the fact that he likes Belmont so much, I think that's a negative as he moves away from Belmont to a different track. I see a good pace in here, and he's another horse who likes to be really up in there. Maybe he can pass horses just a little bit like mischievous Alex, but uh, he likes to be part of the pace. And this pace doesn't seem to set up well for him. For, for those two reasons, he's not going to be on my tickets. A horse I think you got to pay attention to, Matt, is a horse who's lightly raised. It's on a midshipman. I believe he's a five-year-old now. A special reserve because he is just getting better and better. I saw him run second at Keeneland earlier this year, and uh, he's come back even better since. Yep, coming into the race with three wins in a row, including the Iowa Sprint and the Maryland Sprint. The Maryland Sprint is a... Uh, is a grade three. And again, uh, uh, trainer Mike Maker is off to a red hot start at Saratoga. I think right now he's sitting on top of the trainer standings at Saratoga with uh, seven wins, more than Chad Brown, more than Todd Bletcher. Uh, and that's not easy to do. This horse is going to get Joel Rosario up on him, uh, 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 which it, it makes me feel like maybe Rosario will try and keep him off of the pace a little bit and make a run. He's going to be have good odds. Yeah. And if you look at his form, he wants to be close, uh, but you might be right. He might be willing to maybe like mischievous Alex, we said kind of sit third or fourth early. I think um, the bottom line for me, and I know makers doing great at Saratoga so far this year, the bottom line for me is, is he good enough? Because his form is excellent. We just don't know if he can beat these really top sprinters yet, but uh, he is a horse to really watch out for in here, especially at six furlongs. Uh, I'm I'm wondering what the odds board is going to be. Is he going to be close to Whitmore and Forenze Fire on the odds board? Is he going to be the third choice in here or something? Or are they going to let him go a little bit coming from Iowa and Maryland and places like that? But a dangerous horse to be sure for trainer Mike Maker. Another, I, I could say a lot about the same, uh, a lot of the same things about the next horse, although I do like Special Reserve just a little bit better. This horse's name is Miles Ahead. And I'll tell you what, those races in Florida are pretty good, especially the last one in the Smile Sprint. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, 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 burning it up in Florida. And now at Saratoga, we'll make his first start for Rusty Arnold. Um, he, uh, he had been running for vet veteran trainer Eddie Plisa down in florida but uh but arnold was off to a really good start at saratoga also and and miles ahead has to be respected and and like we said brian how many horses have we talked about that we think are going to take uh some betting action somebody's got to be a longer price that that has some uh impressive past performances and, and miles ahead might be one of them yeah, no, I, I agree there, Matt. I think miles ahead is the one that's going to be a little bit ignored of these the first five horses we talked about. And I honestly don't like them as much as the first four horses, uh, or at least a few of those first four horses. I, I think Special Reserve is a little bit more dangerous. But as good as that smile sprint is, he, you're right, he cannot be ignored. I have a little less faith that he's going to pass horses, though, Matt. And with that speed of his and strike power and special reserve and mischievous Alex and forensic fire, I think that might be a tough assignment. If there were less of that type of horse, I would probably like him a whole lot better. Having talked about the speed, strike power just has really, really good early speed. I, I don't like him sticking around in this six for a long race against this kind of field. Uh, I think we should mention Montauk traffic and three technique who both like to come from well out of yeah, and and they are both coming off of uh, off of good efforts. It it, it seems like uh, Jeremiah Engelhardt has fig figured some things out with three technique, uh, uh, sticking to sprinting. He was third in the neighborhood. Interestingly, he gets blinkers on for the first time in his career. Yeah, it, he's interesting, and I also think Montauk traffic because he's a, a, a little bit more lightly raced than three technique and he showed some real talent early on in his career he had a layoff and it took him a little while to get going but i think he's really gotten good of late and i think he's the one that might be coming from the clouds and if they do run 43 and change could set the table up a little bit for the long shot mon talk traffic all right matt one more sprint to talk about one more race to talk about we got to talk about the bing crosby 
not to be confused with the bingo Crosby, which are, <laughs> bingo is, of course, our nickname for our producer, our great producer, Tony Bada Bing, Matt, you know that. But the Bing Crosby, another grade one sprint. And it's at the track where the Breeders' Cup sprint will be, Matt. Grade one, six furlongs, $300,000. I think the conversation has to start with CZ Rocket. If you ask me who the favorite for the Breeders' Cup Sprint is at this very second, I think it's a wide open division, but who's the favorite? I would probably tell you CZ Rocket. I also think he probably gets a good race setup going out to California to Del Mar uh, for trainer Peter Miller. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, if we've got to pick a horse that's on top of the division right now, CZ Rocket is probably the one. Again, another field of nine. Uh, in a grade one sprint. Uh, so uh, just like at Saratoga. Uh, yeah, CZ Rocket, um, seven years old again. And, and, you know, you heard what I said, folks, about eight year old uh, Whitmore, uh, you know, seven years old with CZ Rocket here. Uh, that last start in uh, Sexton Mile still uh, is a little bit of a head scratcher for me because CZ Rocket, he's not a miler. Uh, Brian, but maybe uh, Peter Miller was using it as a tightener for, you know, for this race, the cutback to uh, a, a six furlong sprint here has to be ideal because before that uh, mile race, uh, uh, he was first in the count fleet at uh, Oakland Park and the Hot Springs at Oakland Park in his career. He's one for one at Del Mar. Yeah, he's one for one at Del Mar. I'm going to give you another seven. You mentioned his age, seven years old. Now, he's won seven of his last nine starts. His only loss was that head scratching, as you said. Uh, maybe they were looking at the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile just a little bit, but a sloppy track at Lone Star Park in the Sexton Mile last time. I have no worries that that, that was a race to, to consider negatively for this horse. This horse wants to sprint, as you said, and it, and it was a sloppy track. So his second place finish there, you know, draw a line through that for me. His only other loss was the Breeders' Cup sprint where he was second behind Whitmore. So just, just been a phenomenal sprinter uh, uh, over a year now. And like I said, I think this race sets up for him, Matt, because everything I said about a lot of speed in the Vanderbilt is times two in here as far as I'm concerned. you got horses like Brickyard, Ride, Vertical Threat, Eight Rings, Quick Tempo. Uh, just the, this is going to be a suicidal pace as I handicap this race on paper and CZ Rocket likes to rally. So it's a good spot for him with all that speed, man. I think we should talk maybe about a couple other horses who can come off the pace at least a little bit. The first one is the three-year-old Dr. Scheibel. I think he's going to get bet in here. He won the Del Mar Futurity, a grade one at Del Mar two starts back. Of course, that was just about a year ago. Uh, his return race may not look spectacular on paper, but I think that tough, hard-earned victory should do him a world of good as he moves up in class to the older horses in the Bing Crosby. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that race was exactly the what it looks like. A prep race, let's get a good race into this horse before we tackle uh, Stakes Company again. And, and, and it was a perfect prep, a tough allowance, uh, and, and came out with a victory in there. He comes into this race, uh, Having won three in a row, a trainer, Mark Glatz, got three horses in this field. Yeah, and interestingly, uh, Glatt got Pratt because Platt will ride the three-year-old Dr. Scheibel, and I think that is a feather in the cap if you're thinking how uh, much uh, Glatt likes uh, Dr. Scheibel in this race. Dr. Scheibel is a bit of a wild card in that he's only had one race uh, ever outside of his two-year-old season. Now, all of a sudden, he's facing some of the top older sprinters in the country. So it'll be a test. I could see him moving forward throughout the year and being a real threat come Breeders' Cup sprint time, Matt. I'm not sure if he's ready to beat this, but I like the race setup. I think he'll be a little farther off the pace than usual. And obviously, he likes Del Mar. Another horse who likes Del Mar, Matt, for certain is Collusion Illusion. You look at his record, he's three for three. And if you look at a lot of those races, I know he lost the Breeders' Cup Sprint and the Malibu, but if you look at all of his races uh, from last summer on, he was becoming a really good sprinter last year, but now he makes his first start of the year in the Bing Crosby. Yeah, Brian, a different scenario, but you're right. Three for three at Del Mar. His last win came in this Bing Crosby last year. 
uh, but the difference is, and, and, and I don't know how much, uh, how significant it is. Last year, he was on a roll, Brian, heading into that Bing Crosby. And this year, whole different situation, making his debut uh, for 2021 in a very, very tough field. So uh, I don't know, um, maybe he'll, uh, maybe he'll run well fresh, but uh, it looks like a tough spot to make a debut in. Yeah, it is a tough spot to make a seasonal debut, but there's three things I like real quick. Uh, number one, he debuted last year off, off a good layoff and won. Uh, number two, we already spoke about the three for three record at Del Mar, including this race. Obviously, he likes Del Mar, and that is a thing, uh, just like it is in other parts of the country. Going from San Anita to Del Mar, it's, those are different services, and this horse likes Del Mar. And the other thing is, with all this speed in the race, I think it sets it up for him uh, as well, just like CZ Rock. Those are the two horses that I've seen come from farther out of it to win. So collusion, illusion is very interesting to me. Brickyard Rod has been uh, a revelation this year on the lead, but when he doesn't get an easy lead, Matt, I haven't seen him do really well. Yeah, and, and you, you rattled off a list of some of those speed horses uh, at the beginning of our discussion uh, of the Crosby, and, and, that, and that's real speed, but... It's not, it's not real classy speed. So uh, if ever, Brian, in 2021, a race is setting up for closers, this is the one. Yeah, yeah. And Vertical Thread is another horse making his first start of the year, but he is more speed. He might be a real talent as well. Eight rings, quick tempo. We'll go down that list again. Just it, it's going to be, I would be surprised if we don't see a 43 and change early in this race. Setting it up for the ralliers, Matt, which brings us, to our favorite segment of the show, we want to give some winners out, maybe some horses with odds out. Let's do it, Matt. I'll let you start with your top two picks in the Jim Dandy. All right, in the Jim Dandy, I am going to uh, say that essential quality is going to buck the upset trend specter of Saratoga and uh, continue uh, displaying what a special horse that he is. My second pick is going to be a little bit of a long shot pick brian and i'm gonna go with keep me in mind i love the rider switch to joel rosario yeah essential quality is such a good horse but i have to look at this from a betting standpoint and i see an upset possibility i see some vulnerability in this race for essential quality my horse is wayburn i think he's going to get the lead i think the horses are going to let him on the lead a little bit in that first half mile kind of get a breather out there on the lead. I think he can run a huge race. I, this is the race I've been waiting for Weyburn uh, for a while now. And I, he's my pick to upset the Jim Dandy, to upset the huge favorite essential quality. We'll see. Obviously, essential quality is the worst to beat, so I have him, have him in the number two spot. We'll go next to Saratoga again, Matt, with the Vanderbilt. Uh, mischievous Alex is the favorite. Is that going to be your top pick in here? I am going with Mischievous Alex. I like Mischievous Alex before the Met Mile. I knew it was going to be a tough spot for him. And as you mentioned, uh, he ran admirably in there. I think the cutback is perfect for him. So I've got Mischievous Alex as my top pick. And my second pick, again, is going to be a little bit of a long shot in here. I'm going to go with Special Reserve. Okay, two horses who, who, who have the ability probably to stalk and pounce in this fast early fractions of a Vanderbilt. I, I, I can't say anything negative about either of those selections. Mischievous Alex is the horse to beat. Special Reserve is a big danger in here. But I'm going to look for a little bit more rally in here. So I'm going to go with the old pro, the eight-year-old Whitmore, getting it done yet again, getting it done again at Saratoga like he's done before. I just see this race setting really well uh, up for Whitmore's rally. I like him to win the Vanderbilt at six furlongs on Saturday. I'm going to give you an even longer shot to run second, though. I'm going to go with a rallier who's getting into some really seriously good form. Montauk traffic is my second pick in the Vanderbilt, that, which only leaves the Bing Crosby, Matt. Let's quick go out to the West Coast on the Pacific Ocean for the Bing Crosby. And I'll let you go first. Yeah, and we talked about the, the pace setup and, and uh, the cutback and distance. I've got to go with CZ Rocket on top in here, rallying to 
win the Bing Crosby. And my second pick again, um, maybe a little bit of a price. We'll see. Uh, I like Dr. Shively. To yeah, uh, the, Dr. Shively, I, I think I listed as the second choice in here, but he might be a little bit higher. I, I just have a feeling they might go with him a little bit. I honestly, folks, I only like three horses in the race. I just don't like the speed in this Bing Crosby at all. And that just tells me that the, the top three horses, I, I'd be surprised if the top three horses, at least two of them don't run one, two in here. So I tried to beat the favorite in the Jim Dandy and the Vanderbilt. I'm not going to try to beat the favorite in here, the Bing Crosby. I'm with Matt. CZ Rocket, clearly the horse to beat. And the only two other two horses in the race I like are Dr. Scheibel and Collusion Illusion. I like Collusion Illusion a little bit better. Delmar record, a little bit more ability to rally. I know he hasn't run this year, but I think he'll be ready to put in a big shot in the big Crosby. All right, folks, you have our picks for these three big races. Another great weekend of racing coast to coast at Saratoga and Del Mar. Can I get a parting shot from you, my friend? Absolutely, Brian. Uh, we got some great racing. Enjoy the, enjoy the sprints this weekend. And of course, I want to thank our producer, Tony Badabing, for putting together the show. Yeah, enjoy the sprints. Enjoy that Jim Dandy. It's a good Jim Dandy with the champ coming back. Uh, and next week, Matt, I can't wait to talk about the Whitney. The Whitney looks like it's going to be a fun, fun race uh, a week from Saturday. So always a lot to look forward to here on Horse Center. We appreciate you watching. We appreciate our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Folks, we'll be right back here next week with another great edition of Horse Center. See you then.